Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at realmushrooms.com. Realmushrooms.com slash Ben. Get the code, use the code BPAC for 25% off your first purchase and muscle for 20% off your purchases thereafter. And I've talked about this, this these mushrooms at nauseum for a long time. However, I've actually started including more mushrooms lately than ever before in my life, not less. Because what I've learned as the more I study about mushrooms is they're an incredible stimulant or incredible boost to the immune system. So literally the first thing that I talk about when I uh, get sick or I feel like my immune system is running down, or if I do a blood panel and I see my immunity is down a little bit, literally the first line of intervention for me is I'm going to go after mushrooms. Typically the five defender product from real mushrooms, which is uh, really, really high in beta glucans, which is super useful for stimulating the immune system. They've, they've also got something called ergothionine, which can be very helpful for the gut. And you guys know that I'm a massive fan of lion's mane for brain health. I don't use lion's mane as consistently anymore. I probably use it for about a month at a time. Now, I use three to six grams a day, usually three grams in the morning, three grams in the evening. I don't find it too stimulating. I just find that my brain seems to work more effectively. I find that it allows me to grow my brain, or I shouldn't say that. It allows me to learn more effectively because it's been proven to grow your brain, right? They call it miracle growth for the brain. And you guys know that reishi is like a staple in my house pretty much all the time. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for being a listener to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. Support our sponsor, realmushroom.com slash Ben for the best quality, organic, all fruiting body mushrooms in the world. There's no mycelium, which means you're not paying for grain. Ladies and gents, enjoy the show. Everything ultimately exists on a continuum. So what that means is you have some people who are hyper mobile. I mean, they move a lot, right? The, the, the joints are very, very flexible. And then you have people who are hypo mobile. I mean, they don't move a lot. It's all right. Hyper versus too much and, and hypo is not enough. And everyone exists on this continuum somewhere. And, and life is this dance. Training, fitness, health is a dance. It's not a linear path. It's always this dynamic uh, approach of like, we're going to try something, we're going to see how your body responds or allow your body to respond intentionally, and then we're going to make changes accordingly. So when we approach a program, there's going to be a degree of, you know, like I said, weight training and strength training that has to be there. And the way we approach that is first from a perspective of trying to attain or achieve structural balance. So what is ultimately structural balance? If your body is in any way imbalanced, any, it's like think of the alignment on your car, right? So if the alignment on your car is off, then the faster you go, the more you're going to notice it, right? And weight training is very similar and from a sense of the stronger you get, the more likely you're going to hurt yourself. So what our objective is as coaches is to always kind of keep you in the lines, right? We want to make sure we're always checking your alignment so that your steering wheel and your wheels are doing the same thing. When you step on the gas pedal, you know you're going to go in a straight line. That's really what we're doing. We're constantly taking our job as coaches is it's a dynamic observational process. So literally every day and every week, we're trying to see what you're doing, how your body's adapting to the workouts we're prescribing, and then make adjustments accordingly. So that first workout that we prescribe for you guys, honestly, is of it's really an assessment, right? It's like, let's see what they're capable of doing in all of these different areas. And then we're going to make, you know, intelligent um, predictions and suggestions accordingly to find, you know, like we say, to get these, these wheels rolling in the right direction. Because ultimately what you'll find is if you get structural and you actually learn a few basic things that we'll talk about today, your body is going to adapt a lot faster. Your body, it, believe it or not, I have a belief that muscle building is actually a much faster process than most people tend to believe. Most people will believe it's like, oh, you can put on like six to eight pounds a year. Well, to be honest, I did a coaching program in 2000, I think 2016, maybe 15 or 16. We had an average, average of 26 pounds of muscle gained over six months. That's crazy of 30 people. Again, there was a lot of play there. We were pushing them really hard. We had some deadlines, but that was average over 30 people. And so like, I think, and these people were all natural, or at least we didn't know if they weren't natural. We didn't tell anybody to, to be enhanced or we didn't, you know, it wasn't like part of the program. And these are all natural people and, and people just worked really hard. So I want you guys to realize you're capable of a lot, but here's what it's contingent on. In order for us as coaches to get you maximum result, we have to be able to have a very good insight into what you do. Right? We have to be able to have a really good visual, ultimately, or, or maybe a, a snapshot 
of what you're doing and how well you're doing it, right? So we're writing what you're doing, but if you don't follow it, we can't help you. So one of the most important things you guys can do to succeed in this program for the rest of your life, follow the plan. Follow the plan with 100% accuracy, even if you're like, it's not enough or it's too much, even if it doesn't fit what you're capable of doing, do your best and then give us feedback so we don't do it again. Ben, it really hurts when I do squats. Okay, man, let's pull the squats out of your program for a little bit. We'll deconstruct them, find little things you can do, and then rebuild you back up, right? So that's oftentimes what has to happen. We're giving you this broad stroke look at, hey, here's how you move. The best program in the world is only as, as effective as your ability to execute it. So one of the things that you know that we're very big on, one of the reasons you guys are probably here is because we are really meticulous with how we teach movement mastery and ultimately how we guide you down the path of understanding how to uh, transform your body. So what you guys should all be aspiring to in, in the duration of time that are here is one, following the plan really, really well. Two, not just mindlessly doing what's on the paper. This is important or what's on the, in the app. Don't just mindlessly do what's there, right? The biggest gap that I see between where you are now and where you want to be, the biggest gap that I see is your ability to become present in your body and become intentional in how you do things. Most people do things mindlessly out of habit and what their body deems as the path of least resistance. Path of least resistance means what's the easiest way I can do this? That's what your body does unconsciously. You don't think about it. Your body just wants to move you from here to here. If you continue to train like that, you, you're, you will get results because you're going to get results simply by doing more. But if you want to get maximum results, the key is learning to create a degree of intentionality and presence in everything you do. So presence, what does that mean? So I want all of you guys to join me for 30 seconds here. I did an amazing, med- I've been doing an amazing meditation lately. I won't share quite that with you, but I'll share something with you. Maybe I'll share the meditation at the end. So all I want you guys to do is if you're, if you're driving or something, don't do this, but if you're, if you're able, just close your eyes. So maybe by closing your eyes, you become more aware of the sounds. So 90% of our sensory information comes through our eyes. So maybe by closing your eyes, you're now more aware of the sounds. I know I hear birds. I hear cars in the background. I hear a lot of birds. And now as I take my attention off my hearing, maybe I bring my attention into my sensory experience where I feel pressure, where I feel heat, where I feel cold, where I feel tension, maybe how my abdominals rise and fall with each breath. And what you'll notice, the longer you stay in this state, the more accurate and precise your, your feeling can get. So eventually, I can get to the point where I can feel the blood coursing through my veins. I can feel the heart beating. I can feel little muscle twitches. And as I go deeper and deeper, I can start to feel really precise, precise parts of my body. Maybe I feel the bottom of my feet against the floor. Maybe I feel the back of my legs against the seat. But I can get deeper and deeper and deeper into what I feel. Okay, guys, you can open your eyes. And all we did there is we took 30 seconds and we took our attention off of our thinking mind and brought it into our feeling senses, right? And so when you're in the gym and you're thinking about everything other than what's going on inside your anything other than what's going inside your body, you're ultimately, there's a gap between what you're doing and what you should be doing or maybe could be doing to make the most of the experience, to make the most of the progress. So my ask, my encouragement to each and every one of you guys is to take this program that we're doing, and then I'm going to give you some more details on how we approach it. And ultimately, one, follow it with a great deal of precision and accuracy. Two, learn to do it with an internal focus. Because what you'll notice, just like we kind of went with depths over that 30-second period, what you'll notice is eventually you can start to feel how contracted a muscle is, how lengthened a muscle is. And you could start going, oh, if I do this, I can contract this thing harder. And if I do that, I can lengthen it a little bit more. And if I do this, I feel strong. And if I do this, I feel weak. And if I create a little more stability, I can actually get a, get a three more reps. Or if I change my breathing, I can get two more reps. 
And you start to look at these different opportunities of how you can progress within the confines of the prescription we've offered you guys, right? This is how we introduce intentionality, right? Training with intelligence is about intentionality, using your mind as a top-down control mechanism to control your body, okay? So this is like, we're starting high level here with your programming. Now, all of this nuance from weight training and strength training and muscle building, which we'll put into one little category, to mobility, stability, flexibility, we'll put another one. It's a dynamic flux. And the, the best way that you can make changes is by telling us where the gaps are. We can observe when you move, we can observe by looking at your pictures, but the greatest way you're going to make progress is by, we're obviously not there. You can give us observation of like, hey, when I do this stretch on my left side, it feels great. When I do it on my right side, it feels extra tight. So when we start looking at the little nuance left to right, or maybe stretch to stretch, exercise to exercise, within those limitations, we'll say, weaknesses, exist our greatest opportunities for progress. So the more insight and feedback you can provide for us as coaches, the more effective we can be in designing your program. If we were standing right there beside you, we would be able to see and feel exactly what's happening. But right now, we need you guys to be our feedback system. So I'll give an example. I can do a lunge with my right leg and I can do 100 reps and I would feel great. And, you know, my, I get really deep contractions. Lately, for like the last two weeks, I can do a lunge with my left leg and I can do the same 100 reps, but my knee's going to start to hurt. And I, when I feel my lateral quad, it feels kind of squishy. Whereas when I feel the right quad, it feels like it's hard as a rock. I'm like, okay, what's happening there? There's no way anyone would be able to, to notice that by watching me on the outside. Maybe if I was there, right? To watch. But like, in general, that's the type of feedback we need you guys to start noticing. Like, hey, when I do this, it doesn't quite feel the same on this side as it does on that side, right? Or again, any type of internal feedback is incredibly useful for us to make changes. And it's incredibly useful for you guys to make progress. So coming back to these dynamic balances between strength training and mobility training and cardiovascular training and skill acquisition. So let's imagine we had like four volume knobs is a really good way that I like to think of it. Some of those volume knobs are going up, right? Some of them are going up. We're turning volume up on some of them, but we can't turn all of them up at the same time. So we have to learn to turn some up, meaning, so a reason we can't turn them all at the same time, I should say, is because you have a certain capacity to recover. So if I just start dumping more training on you and like, all right, we're going to train five days a week, or we do five cardios, or we do high intensity cardio, or we do you know, squats every day, your body would go, eh, right? Your body goes, no chance. There's no way we're recovering from this. You start to feel a little down. You start to lose energy. Your, your overall sense of well-being will diminish. Our objective as coaches is to have your overall sense of well-being ascend. If you don't wake up every day going, you know what, I'm not sure why, but I just feel a little bit better, then you should be having a conversation with your coach. We really want you guys to be um, feeling better every day. Your subjective experience of life matters. You should feel better every single day, hopefully, right? And if there's something that isn't feeling good, newsflash, you don't have to feel that way. We're here to support you with it. These are the types of questions I want you to come to these calls with. Coach, I'm not sure why, but I wake up in the morning, my back's sore. Great. Do this. Problem solved. Coach, I'm not sure why, but I, you know, at 3.30 in the morning, I wake up and I'm not sure why. Good. Try this. Right? So what we're looking for here, what the coaches are really good at is problem solving. Because you're shifting your focus away from what's happening on the outside, which is, which is like, I want to lift more weight. And you're shifting focus to, I want to contract more muscle. Now. If your goal is getting stronger, then don't do that, right? So I should acknowledge strength and muscle building sit at two opposite ends of the spectrum. If my goal is, is getting as strong as possible, my goal is to move as much weight as possible. And I don't really care about how I do it. At some level, the form matters because it's efficiency and effectiveness. But I'm more concerned with, hey, I want to put 225 pounds in the bar. I want to do it this many times. That's so different than muscle building. Very different. Although strength is a component of muscle building, it's further down the line as far as its value. 
So when we talk about building muscle, this is, this is a, you guys have probably heard me say this a thousand times, but muscle building is about challenging muscles, right? Powerlifting, strength training is about completing reps. Those are not the same thing. Challenging muscles versus completing reps. Three sets of eight and, uh, as a bodybuilder and three sets of eight as a powerlifter or three, to three as a powerlifter are not the same. Not all reps are created equal. They, they're absolutely different in their, in their stimulus and effect on the body. Now, this is where this programming thing comes in. Because if I want you to get strong, maybe the stimulus I'm looking for is for the nervous system to adapt, or maybe the, the uh, collagen, collagenous tissues to adapt, the connective tissues to adapt and get stronger. That's useful. But it, you know, you just have, this is where I, you know, identifying your goals through a coach comes in. We have to identify precisely what we're trying to do. And we will, we will guide your mindset and your, your training focus toward that. A percentage of people get this, this assessment we do, which is basically eight exercises. And well, the reason we do that is we, we look at you doing these eight exercises in 20 rep ranges, in 12 to 15 rep ranges, and then four to six rep ranges. So we're seeing how you do with endurance. We're seeing how you do with hypertrophy. And we're seeing how you do with strength. And where does your body want to break? So some people are really good at 20s, terrible at fives. Some people are really terrible at 20s and amazing at fives. And we start to look for what are you good at, three to fives, and then what are, you, what are your opportunities for progress? And depending on your goal, the coach will then assess, okay, we need to do more of this. Personally, I almost always will take a weakest link approach, right? I believe that when I'm programming, I want to identify the, the balance between where you want to go and ultimately what you're not good at. Because ultimately, if you want to be a power lifter, then you know, there's certain things that matter. If you want to have a body transformation, there's different things that matter. If you want to be a pro athlete, there's very different things that matter. So we're looking at kind of dynamically balancing all these things. Once your form is great, then it, then it really is about progressive overload, right? So everyone in bodybuilding says progressive overload is king, and they are in one sense correct. Ultimately, the only way you're going to progress is progressive overload. Where that theory breaks down is that 95% of people, and that's not an exaggeration, it's actually probably more than that, 95% of people or more who go to the gym, their form is atrocious and they can't, well, they can't progressively overload because they're going to hurt themselves. They'll hurt themselves. Their, their, their tire alignment will blow out before they actually are able to drive the car fat. And that's what's missing. So it's this dynamic acquisition of, okay, I can, I can do my form really good with 50 pounds, but when I go to 70, it breaks. So I keep practicing it at 60 or 50 until it gets better. So it's like this constant ascension. So if you guys know when I program, we program, I, we program three phases, actually four. So the first phase is going to foundational phase. And that's really what I'm talking about today. That's, that's establishing structural balance. That's establishing skill acquisition. That's establishing the skill of walking and breathing. That's ultimately learning how to dynamically balance uh, your lifestyle with your goal so that you can get better at moving. Quality movement governs this phase as far as training goes. Second phase, now there's this ascension, this ascension, which is the optimization phase. It's an ascension of now I have to maintain this skill as I ascend my work, as I ascend my quality of work and quantity of work together. So phase one, if you could say is about one word, it's about quality. Phase two is about quality and quantity. So trying to ascend those two things together. So if I can do a curl with 20 pounds, that doesn't necessarily mean I can do the same thing with 30 pounds. Right? I have to learn to, to stabilize. I have to learn to acquire that skill. And then the performance phase is I've kind of reached maximum recoverable volume, which is the performance phase. Once I've meet, reached maximum recoverable volume, then it's about undulating, which is like these daily fluctuations up and down so that I can kind of stay within the realm of what my body's capable of recovering from. Progressive overload doesn't just happen by more weight on the bar. It's really important for you guys to know that. Putting more weight on the bar often actually doesn't equate to progressive overload, which is interesting, isn't it? If I put more weight on the bar, that doesn't necessarily mean the muscle I'm training is, is doing more work. It's a fact. So what we want to aspire to as people who want to improve our body is find progressive overload through directing tension to one specific muscle instead of distributing it. So when I pick up a weight, as I was just saying to Sean, I can choose to use any number of muscles in my body. I can use momentum. I can use, you know, swinging it. I can use very specific, or I can use this broad array of muscle, or 
I can learn to eliminate momentum in cheating and I can learn to contract muscle in isolation, which ultimately allows that muscle to have a greater degree of challenge. So progressive overload doesn't just happen from a perspective of putting more weight on the bar. The different types of stimuli within a weight training session is important. So we talk about programming. It's very important that the rep ranges that you see in your programs are relatively well adhered to because they all have a different effect in the body to include the rest periods, right? So the coaches are very intentional with how we choose and and prescribe uh, rep ranges and rest periods and tempos, right? So what if we were to say there's probably, and coaches, you can tell me if I'm wrong, if we were to say there's probably one thing that people just kind of lose their mind on is the tempo. Most people don't really adhere to tempos really well. Tempos are really important because it changes the type of stimulus that your body is receiving, the type of signal that your body is receiving. So if we have you at a slow tempo versus a fast tempo, it can be a completely different type of desired end result or a desired stimulus to your body. So please pay attention to the tempos. Tempos are read with four numbers. You may see something like four, one, one, zero. So that's four second eccentric and eccentric is often moving away from the body, right? Uh, and that's not true. It's, uh, it's lengthening the muscles. So when we say moving away from the body, it's moving away from the midline. I won't confuse you guys, but the, the uh, extending, the lengthening of the muscle. So eccentric lowering, four seconds, then a pause, one second, then a one second lifting, and then a zero second pause, right? This is one example of a tempo. Pay attention to the tempos. Then pay attention to the rest periods because if you're in a strength training phase or with the aspiration of accumulating strength and you're, you're rushing the rest periods, you're not going to get the same result. If you're in a metabolic phase where we're trying to create a bit of more energy demand in the body, get your body at producing more energy, get you better at creating muscular endurance, then you take 15 seconds too long, you could be losing the benefit, you could be losing the signal. So within these nuanced um, aspects of a workout, the more, cl- the more clearly you adhere to it, the better your results will be. So a strength-based stimulus, which may be three to six reps, maybe one to six reps, if you ask Chris, uh, one to five reps, versus a hypertrophy-based stimulus, which we'll call like six to 12, versus a metabolic-based stimulus, which could be anywhere from eight to 20 reps or six to 20 reps with decreased time in between it really makes a big, big difference to the stimulus that your body's receiving. I always say the best way to prepare for, for a workout is by doing it. So we call it physical rehearsal. So if you're going to go in and do a set of bench presses and coach Steve says it's time to do 20 reps, pick a weight that you know without a shadow of a doubt you can do for 20. Do it, stop at 15, right? And like, okay, I got that. Then pick a next weight and like, just, you're just basically trying to build up to the weight where you know, like, okay, when I start getting to 15 on this weight, man, it's going to be hard for me to grind out the next five. And then you can go ahead and, and, and make that next set your first set of 20. All right. So your warm up sets are physically rehearsing and ultimately just slowly ascending up to the weight you're trying to do. So it's a similar approach in powerlifting. Although once you get better at it, you can choose your weights more accurately based on previous experience. In the beginning, sometimes just like, I got to like feel this out. I have no idea. My, my suggestion, though, you notice I said stop at 15, even though the reps said, or the scheme said 20, you don't necessarily want to go to points of failure on your warm-up, right? So, again, some advanced mechanisms of warming up. You guys can try this if you feel like you're advanced. I'll often do single repetitions on my way to maximum weights. I do it differently than like a powerlifter would do a single. Powerlifter would be a single, single, single. I'll do it differently, whereas I'll go to like the shortest position. Let's say I'm doing like a leg curl, leg extension. And I'll go all the way to the shortest contracted position. I'll just stay there and I'll squeeze for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds in that short position where the load is. And I wait to feel where exhaustion starts to come on and then I stop, right? I don't want to get exhausted. So in warmups, you don't want to induce fatigue. You want to induce excitation. So when you're looking to find these weights, you you do whatever you want to do to physically rehearse the, the movement and choose the weight ultimately by ascending up. Thanks for listening to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. For full episode guides with important takeaways and bonus resources, head over to muscleintelligence.com slash learn. If you enjoy the show and find value in the content, please subscribe, share this podcast with at least one person you know and love who would benefit from this content, leave us a review and support our sponsors.
You can see the full list of show sponsors, discounts, and get exclusive muscle intelligence deals at muscleintelligence.com slash resources. To join our private community and get VIP access to my master classes, upcoming muscle camps, and other resources that we don't post anywhere else, head to muscleintelligence.com slash community. Most of all, thank you very much for your trust, for your time, and most importantly, for supporting health and fitness in this world. Enjoy your day, and I look forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you so much for tuning into Muscle Intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Bikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.